Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Corky Kessler, and we're here at the uh, Vega Luna Beach Club. Uh, this is a funding panel, and uh, we want to thank uh, Paramax Films for being the producer of these panels. Uh, to my right, uh, there's Emily Salverson, and I'd like you to tell us a, a little about you. Hi, um, my name is Emily Salveson. Thanks so much, Corky, for having me. This is fabulous, and um, thank you for putting this on. Uh, I'm the CEO of Streamline Global Group. We do tax equity finance, and we created a new financial model for the film industry that allows investors to get significant uh, returns on their investment in a much safer way. Uh, maybe I'll. Maybelle Pasek, founder and executive producer of Velocity Films. I'm a former Canadian broadcaster, overseeing a multi-million dollar budget investing in documentaries, feature films, and television series. James. Uh, my name is James Rumsey. I'm an independent UK producer. Uh, I just completed my first feature um, that went out in distribution in the UK last year called My Feral Heart. Um, I'm swimming with the big guys here because uh, mine was a, what we call a micro-budget film which took, took um, advantage of some tax breaks in the UK, um, which spread the risk quite nicely for the investors. Uh, how, how do you define a, a micro-budget? Micro-budget um, is 100,000 100, pounds, which I guess makes no difference if you're talking in euros or dollars these days, uh, so right. yeah. Okay, well, the, the, the first question to the two funding sources here. Um, uh, Maybell, yes. uh, when, when someone approaches you to consider funding, uh, tell us what some of the things are that you're looking for and what would make you very interested or possibly interested in a project. And to, to get behind a project, you're really looking for some strong key creative. Up, up, up. You're really looking for some strong key creative, and the cast is important as well. So I'm looking for projects that really have some greater commercial potential. And is that for Canada or for the world? That's for the international market. All right. And so if someone came to you with a great story and the story touched your heart, touched your mind, touched your soul, uh, and called you in a lot of various ways, you would never consider it if it didn't have talent or... C'est possible. It's possible that I could get on board with a project like that. Absolutely. But it has to be a passion project for sure. Okay, Emily, what sort of thrills you? Well, um, I love hiking. <laughs> um, when I look at a project, the first thing I always look at is the script. Because to me, it all starts with a great script. Um, in my opinion, if you have a fabulous cast and the script is eh, it's sort of like building a house, having a crack foundation, and then throwing a... Fendi costs a couch over it. I mean, your house is still going to fall down the hill. It'll look great, but it's not. Gonna, it's not going to go well. Um, I also look for projects that fit our specific ratios. Um, we need to uh, look at projects that have some funding already in place and that are shot in the United States. Uh, all right, um, James. When, yeah. when, when you're looking for for funding. Um, and you talk to your funding sources, whoever they or he or she may be, how do you sell them? What is the important thing for those people who came into your project from before? Well, I think, I mean, first of all, I couldn't agree. What was your name again? Sorry. Emily. Emily, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more about, <laughs> about the script <laughs> thing. So I, so I think you're selling them on, you're enrolling them in the story. I talk about enrollment a lot. I think you can't make a film without enrollment. So I'm sure, yeah, there's, there's when you get higher up, the ladder and there's this huge finance and you're looking at the margins of return then it becomes more of a spreadsheet but where I'm sitting right now and I'm looking to graduate to the next tier of budget so 500 to a million so that's still low budget um, but to me I can do an enormous amount with that but yeah it's, it's finding the right script and rolling them in the passion for the project the one I just did fitted your model of it's a passion project with a uniqueness for example we had a lead actor with Down syndrome and it was it, it, it spoke to the disabilities community and it's, it's done very well there. Um, but yeah, you know, and I'm, and I'm talking about what kind of schemes I'm taking advantage of which minimize their risk. So if they're going to get tax rebates for their money, so, you know, for every pound they give me, they're only risking 
70 pence or 70 cents, whatever, those sorts of things is what I would talk to potential investors about. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a film industry, so we can offer them stuff that the other, other industries can't. There's a certain perceived glamour that comes with the film industry, and uh, a lot of people want to be part of that and see how a set works and meet the actors and things uh, like uh, that. Uh, J James, it's, it's uh, very interesting. You uh, call y your incentives in England schemes. A scheme has a totally different uh, meaning, and we look at it in the United States. Right, um, right. I, I um, am story-driven, and I believe that a good story and a good team behind it, which adds credibility and trust and... And feasibility as well, And yeah. feasibility is equally important yeah. in the, uh, the process. Uh, some of my projects um, and some of the projects that I've referred to Emily are, are as she said, story-driven. Then yeah. the, the, the question is, even if it doesn't have talent, she knows with the right talent, with a good story, we all can work to get the right talent to become yeah. part of the story. But Absolutely. stars do not make the movie. Right. Uh, that, Certainly unknowns can add a unique flavor to a film if it has a really strong script. Yes, yeah, Sundance, for mm -hmm. example, had films with Robert De Niro and very bankable talent, mm -hmm. but they didn't sell because mm -hmm. the stories were not good enough to have the project get bought. So it is, it's a, it's a story-driven uh, situation. Um, when, when you started out, which is fairly soon, what made you start out in the field that you're now in? I wanted to solve an unsolvable problem. Um, I come from a long line of financial industry disruptors, and I, I mean, really, and uh, I wanted to really make my mark, but I wanted to do it in a way that was, one, enjoyable to, enjoyable to me, but also in a way that actually helped people and helped an industry. And so, looking at the entertainment industry, I thought it was baffling to me that people were uh, losing so much money so frequently by investing in films. So when I created this financial model, I thought, oh, I thought, what, um, I thought, is there a way to make it so that the profits of the film are not what define whether the investor makes money or not? Because no one's building a house and, you know, a contractor's not swinging a hammer on a house going, it's always been my dream to build a house. I think this house will sell. I just believe I have so much passion for this house. Like no, like make something, um, make something good. It depends on the script, blah blah blah, and all of that is great. But it needs to be a solid investment for the investor, or it's just agreed. not fair. Agreed, agreed. It seems so almost that's irrational I mean. in some way. Oh, absolutely, that uh, there isn't a ROI. And, exactly. And that's critically important that we. Yeah, that's critically important that we're sensitive to that for investors because we want them to come back. We want to build a relationship with yeah. them, and I think that we need to demonstrate that more and and demonstrate how that can happen. We Absolutely. want to build. Um, well, for myself, anyways, I want to build a long-term relationship. Um, that is not just one project, but it's 10 projects, 20 projects, and they have, you know, commercial appeal. They have their passion projects. They're really. We're yeah. very much on the same page in that yeah. way. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's, it makes business sense. Uh, the, 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 right. the, the, the problem, James, yeah. with your budgets, yeah. if, no, no, if you were But it's not in, sustainable. No, no, no. I but, can't survive. But, but <laughs> if you were in the United States, um, what I would strongly tell you is you cannot protect the investor's dollars without what's called a completion bond. Right. And yeah. and and you, you your budgets do not raise to a level where right. you could get a completion sure. bond. So right. they have to trust you. And sometimes, no matter how good your line producers right. or how good you are, stuff happens and you go over budget. And I'm not, I'm, I'm yeah, not faulting. Sure. And then where do you find that that money? And that's the hardest and the most expensive money to do. So as you go mm -hmm. through your journey and. You're, you're, you're in your lower budget movies. Think about the fact that there's no way you can guarantee your investors a finished movie. There is an exception, well, though, yeah. to that rule. If you were to undertake a production in Canada, in fact, in Manitoba, in my province, we mm -hmm. offer 
the most competitive uh, tax credit in, pro in Canada, which is 65% on wow. labor and 30% on local spend. So if you were to come to our province, sure. you could benefit from that tax credit. So then you can you can take that to an investor and say, look at I've got this tax credit. The bank will finance 80, up to 80% of the tax yeah. credit. So that is a mechanism to help leverage some financing and give some security to an investor. And also, sure, and that's in the United States, what's important is that with IRS code 181, is that the productions that had at least, you know, that started shooting last year or complete, nearly completed projects, um, and a lot of the projects that we've grandfathered in, whether or not, because that's always the question of the investor, is how do I know that this won't be some runaway of production? I've heard right. so many horror stories. Right. With 181, it doesn't matter even whether the film is fully completed. The investor still gets their benefit on day one. And so that's something that's really important. I think that, you know, studios and uh, groups like the WGA and the DGA should be lobbying hard mm -hmm. for IRS code 181 to come back. Is, is 181 a, a tax rebate? Because uh, my, my uh, you, uh, you can wipe out people's federal taxes. It's not yeah, a, ah, t that's tax a rebate. beneficial. Uh, uh, okay, this, but but but, but wait, yeah. we we've been given the the, the, the cut. cut. Yes. So, a final thought, James. Well, my final thought. There's there's. I've listened a lot because you guys are ahead of the queue for me in terms of experience and the kind of budgets that you're working with and financing, which is great for me. I've been absolutely heartened by your emphasis 100% on, look, and yours, we don't care about cast if the story is wrong. So put, put the story first and build the house on that. Um, loving hearing about the tax breaks in Manitoba, so we I will want to talk more about that. Um, and yeah, this, 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 this scheme, you, I call it a scheme because that's the terminology of, uh, of HMRC in the UK. We have Enterprise Investment Scheme, is what they call it, and Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme, where seed is for lower budgets, and you can get 50% of your tax written off, and Enterprise Investment Scheme, you can get 30% of your tax written off. That's in very broad terms. It's more complex than that. Um, but yeah, you know, you know, all it's done is what your advice and everyone else's advice for me as a coming from a micro-budget world and moving up is what I've been here, is where I've been aiming to get to which is that next level where um, yeah there's you start talking about completion bonds I was talking to a lady about that today and saying yeah they cost but they do give you the assurance so the extra cost you, might that get that you the that extra you, investment that you, you know so it's been a good day of learning for me okay thank you <laughs> uh, final thought final thought I would say that what we are doing with 181 is the way to solve the problem of um, risk in the film industry and you know I think it's also about having an amazing team you know Corky <laughs> you're on my team and I so appreciate you um, my business partner Josh Sabar and uh, you know our other accountants and attorneys I couldn't be doing this you know without them and so it really takes a team to make this happen and to help producers make films uh, uh, my final thought on this topic is Everyone's looking for money. There's not a project that comes to me that's not looking for her money. And they're chasing the same money, and a hundred or a thousand people are chasing the same, same sources. So you have to differentiate yourself from those hundred or thousand people that are looking for the same money. It, it, it sounds simple, but that's what it is. And I thank all of you for being here. Thank you for having us, Corky. This is fabulous. Thank you.